Hey there, Mike again. Uh, if you're watching this, this is most probably actually your first video. Um, and I've deliberately put in an oil change because it's something you have to do. And if you want to start doing your own maintenance, it's a great place to start. You should be doing an oil change once every couple of years if you're doing normal sort of mileage on an old timer. If you're doing a high mileage, then once every year. Uh, these cars wanted to be uh, serviced more frequently than a modern car would be the simplest way to put it. Um, so let's get on with doing the oil change. Okay, so I've warmed up the engine because that would just help the oil to flow. What you would normally have is this small little um, plug here with its thrust washer. So that crush washer you should replace every time. What I've got here is a nice little piece that's uh, bought in the States. I'll put the link for that for you on the, the site just at the bottom of the picture. Um, this just allows me just to open it up. It's just a little ball uh, valve inside. I can open it up and drain it down. Because it sits at the back of the sump in this way, it's just out of the way, so it doesn't get banged at all. Um, so it's well protected and just makes it so much easier because all I have to do is just twist that round and there you are. And it's just because it's a ball, it's a twist in the opposite direction. The warmer you get the engine, the uh, faster the oil will drain, have a good oil catch uh, pan. And if you're like me, I now just leave this for a day because I've got no need to do anything else. So I've drained out the oil. Now I need to take out the filter because we'll swap the filter at the same time because that's where you've got all of the muck. You need something like this or you can get grips that go on the top. I'd like these little straps that go around the side. Just drop it over. Turn it up. Broken the seal. Now just spin it off. Sorry about the car starting. And there you are. There's a dirty filter and you can see the thickness of the oil inside. That we're going to change. So the dirty old filter the brand new filter. Before we put this on we'll just put a little bit of oil around on the seal because that just helps make a nice good seal as you tighten it down. It screws in, you can just about see the screw thread inside there. It just screws on, you must make sure it's straight, it's very easy to cross thread, very easy to put on at an angle. I've just moved the leads and so on out of the way so you can see the base very clearly in the centre pillar that goes up into the filter and here's your thread piece that you've got to just wind it down gently and this is the rim that that rubber seals seals on so as I said we just need to put a little slick of oil on it just to make it really nice and tight. Okay just oiled that up and just drop it over and give it a try and make sure it's square you'll feel an immediate um, tightness if it's not square. Yeah, it spins on nicely if you've got it square. So just do that up hand tight. And then you're ready to start filling. What we'll do, fill through the top, um, obviously, and we'll just fill it very gently. So we'll only put about a litre in at the beginning. Take the uh, ignition lead off the coil. And that way, what we can then do is turn the motor over so it starts to feed the oil through the system. 
um, without it being able to fire up. And that also just makes sure, as us just to make sure that we've got that actually tight. Okay. Okay, so we've now got the car all ready. Fill it up with the oil. 20W50. So you can see that clearly there. Something good like Castrol, always nice to have. Um, I always use uh, a measured jar to fill it. It's easier to put it in. You can just use a funnel if you don't have one of those, but then you're not quite sure how much you put in. In total, you should be somewhere around the two and a half litres, plus a little bit more just to top up at the end. But put the two and a half litres in first. Filled up the oil, two and a half litres, measured into, into the top here. Now I'm just leaving it to drain down through. What I'll do next is I'll take the high tension lead off the top of the coil, off the coil and not the distributor because that leaves a live lead if you do it this way, if you take the other end off. So that comes off there. You'll notice if you're observant I've got two coils. This coil is just a spare. So if the coil fails at night I've just got to swap over the leads. No problems of digging around to sort out a spare coil. And normally on a B there's plenty of space to put a second one there. So it's quite a good way to carry the spare. So there's the high tension lead off the coil. This now lets me go turn the engine over and the starter will turn. So you'll turn the engine on the starter but it can't fire. And that just allows the oil to circulate round and gets it into all the crannies, into the um, oil cooler down the front here and so on. And so that you've filled up the whole of the system, the parts of the system that won't fill from gravity. That then lets you check your oil level on your dipstick just to top it off to somewhere between minimum and maximum, wherever you like to run. Because it burns a bit of oil, I run it nearer to the maximum than the minimum, but that's up to you uh, as to what you'd like to do. And that's it. Then your oil change is all finished.